From UFOs to psychic powers and government conspiracies, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Here are the facts. The first U.S. national park was Yellowstone, established by Ulysses S. Grant on March 1, 1872. Almost 50 years later, Woodrow Wilson created the National Park Service on August 25, 1916. Since this time, the park system has grown to a massive size, comprising more than 84 million acres of land across the states as well as in American Samoa, Guam, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. In 2015 alone, more than 307 million people visited park sites. Many lingered for a short time, a few hours perhaps. Others stay for a weekend or the length of a camping trip, and some never make it out. Here's where it gets crazy. People really have disappeared at national parks. In October of 1928, newlyweds Glenn and Bessie Hyde vanished while traveling the Colorado River. Their boat was discovered that winter, undamaged and full of supplies. Children have disappeared as well, such as Alfred Beelharts in 1938 or Catherine Van Alst in 1946. Disappearances continue in the modern day. These aren't always children, nor are they inexperienced. Some authors believe this is a countrywide crisis covered up by Uncle Sam. In his Missing 411 books, author David Politis collects reports of unsolved disappearances in national parks. According to Politis, he began investigating these cases when a park ranger contacted him with concerns regarding missing persons in the park system. Politis argues that hundreds of people are disappearing on public land under extraordinary circumstances, with their bodies discovered miles away from where they were last seen, or scattered clues left in odd places, or, perhaps most disturbing of all, they simply vanished. What could explain these disappearances? First, there's the strong possibility of accident or human error. In remote areas, a slip leading to a broken leg or head injury could spell doom for hapless hikers. Becoming lost in severe weather conditions can also lead to death. The woods are huge and deep, and it's easy to lose one's way. Second, there's the less likely possibility of animal attacks. While the chances of a bear attacking a hiker or camper may be relatively low, the presence of scavengers is a certainty. Regardless of how a person dies in the wild, animals and microorganisms will quickly devour as much of the body as possible. Politis ask readers to think outside their comfort zones when seeking explanations for these disappearances. Coupled with his earlier books on cryptozoology, many critics as well as proponents of this author believe he's implying that a large, undiscovered primate is responsible for these attacks. In other words, a Sasquatch. Yet it's fair to mention Polites does not explicitly mention Bigfoot in his books on the park system. As interest in these cases grew, more anecdotes emerged. Stories of children disappearing, often directly behind their parents, only to be found dead or miles away. Stories of disappearance clusters, where people went missing at a higher rate, such as Yosemite National Park. Yet whether or not you believe a large cryptid could survive undiscovered in the national park system, there are other possible explanations, and it's overwhelmingly unlikely that all these disappearances could be attributed to a single cause. For example, what about the people who disappear on purpose, forsaking mainstream society to live in the wild? What about the people who use these remote locations as an opportunity to fake their deaths or assume new identities? And what about the likelihood of crime, manslaughter, drug deals, kidnapping, serial killers? Other conjecture pushes the story further into the fringe, alleging bizarre weather patterns followed disappearances or that some sort of otherworldly force may be involved. Polites finds clusters in more than simple geography. He also sees chronological clusters, where a rash of missing persons cases crops up in a short amount of time, or demographic clusters, 
For example, he argues that many of those who go missing are children and the elderly, and when they are rescued, they often have no clear memory of recent events. These perceived similarities have led Paulides and others to dig deeper. Yet, according to Paulides, the national park system refuses to assist any investigation, claiming to not keep track of disappearances, and, additionally, denying his Freedom of Information Act request. Could this be because the disappearances are such a tiny fraction of yearly visitors? Or is Paulides right when he alleges there's something the National Park Service doesn't want you to know? To learn more about alleged disappearances in the U.S. National Park System, tune in to our audio podcast at our website, StuffTheyDon'tWantYouToKnow.com.